Whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. Reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. What's going on, everybody? There this it is. is. Jeremy Turgeon from Brass Man Reptiles. And I'm Robin. I'm creeping it real. And if you're watching this on the YouTubes. On the tubes of you. On the tubes of you, then you see that we're joined with a special guest. Very special guest. A very special guest who's been uh, tortured by us and nerd for many days. Put to slave labor. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're stoked because Lucas Masso, aka Cobra, Cobra Keeper, Keeper Junior, Junior is in, in the, the house. house. So pumped, man! How's it going? Good. Good. Right into the mic. Right, in, right in there. I am doing good today. Boom! Hey. I'm, I'm super pumped to I have work. you. On. A lot today, but I'm doing good. <laughs> that dude will never know the value of a hard day's work. Yeah. Off your cell phone. <laughs> I wasn't on my cell phone a lot today. So. Hey, hey. So. It's important. Uh, Very important. It's <laughs> tough, man. Sometimes uh, sometimes I get drawn into conversations. I get do I wake up every morning, I got like twenty five messages and I'm like, I guess it's time to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> so Lucas, you uh, are in a family of, of reptile keepers and you've just hatched out your first clutch of snakes, is that right? Um, basically, yeah. 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 So a lot of if you're listening right now, he hatched out basically the easiest snakes to breed on the planet. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So <laughs> why don't you tell us a little bit, like tell the people a little bit more about what you hatched out and, and the process that went into what, what you just hatched out. Because I think it's really, spe- I think it's oh. special, especially, wait, how old are you? How old are you? 16. You're 16 years old right now. Okay. Now describe to the people what you just, what you just did. Um. I hatched out green tree pythons. <laughs> green tree pythons, yeah. And that is freaking difficult. It is chal- <laughs> That is a challenging species to reproduce in captivity. Yep. It is. So you've been working with green trees, and that's kind of your specialty is, is arboreals and uh, green trees and emeralds and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So I got my first emerald 2018. Boom. Um, and it just kept on going. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So what do you like more? You like emeralds better or green trees better? Emeralds. All day, all day, all day. Take that green tree, people. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. I, I like green trees. All I'm saying is, what did he breed first? Ah, <laughs> ah. You're, right, you're right about that. You're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like Rob said, you you kind of come from a, a family of reptile keepers. So, what was it kind of like growing up? in the industry <laughs> you know like we've we've seen pictures of you at like what three or four years old with like ball pythons like like cut but like fresh cut eggs yeah you know so like what's what was that kind of like um very fun to be honest i wasn't really into it at the time i started getting into it in 2018 like by myself but i would just help my dad a lot because he was heavily into the ball pythons mm. So growing up was very fun, a bunch of cool animals. All the kids at my school knew me as the the snake kid. <laughs> it was just it was pretty awesome. Heck yeah! Was there uh, was there a species that you enjoyed working with more, or was it basically like all ball pythons that you were you were? It was all ball pythons. Then? Yeah, I had, I believe I had a pair of Nelsons, but mm. that was mainly like my dad taking care of them mm. i would just help out my dad with the ball pythons a lot and that's when he realized that he liked sinaloans better the best yeah the best the if you will best yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just joking with him a little lucas bit lucas has learned what it's like to be harassed by older brothers no oh boy <laughs> <laughs> while he's been up here <laughs> we're every putting him through day. the ringer but hey i yeah, every single day we've we, i'm just gonna say uh, the things that you can learn through through working at a facility like this, oh, even I just you're going to say through harassment of, from others. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's going to make you a better handler. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, dodging Dan punches is a great way to become yeah. a great ball python breeder. Uh, well, I'm just I'm not saying about breeding <laughs> things, but holding things. Uh, he held a big melanota. Uh, was that yesterday? And I saw today you're holding Crowley, the big albino melanota. Crowley's so awesome! It's crazy. It's crazy, right, dude? Yeah. What's your favorite part about him? Because like his eyes, like it's a pretty snake. He's all white. He's got the yellow triangles. Crowley's an albino, a teenage albino uh, mangrove snake, Boiga melanota. Uh, that we got at Nerd, and there's a lot of cool things about him. Like when you hold him up to the light, you can literally see his heart pumping in the middle of his body. I was, uh, holding him, talking to Jake, mm-hmm. and I see blue lines. I'm like, "What the oh hell my is that?" God, this is fucking veins. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> you can see him just pumping right through." And if you hold him up to, like to the light, you can see his heart pumping. It's crazy. Yeah. That was like the first thing we all did when we first got it. Kevin was like, hold up to the light and look. And yep. we we're like, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> and then his eyes, dude, they're like these pink marbles. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like yeah. this like really light, not even light. It's like a rich pink color. Yeah. Very interesting. I love that snake. He's so cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry. I'm like, I'm looking at the YouTube video. Looking at how horrible this this is. Ah, you're I'm fine. The side, and I now I have to. That's right. I have to be a Rob. Project and and talk loudly into the microphone. Yeah, so you guys can hear me. There we go. We'll <laughs> see how the audio comes out on this. <laughs> I'm glad I boosted in post. Hey. <laughs> oh man. So going back to your green trees a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the most challenging part? of the breeding process for you patience ah uh, <laughs> yeah i can feel that I, yeah i haven't really told anyone this but i actually paired them up in like april of mm-hmm. 2020 mm-hmm. and i was just very impatient and like four days after i was like dude i'm done do you like that's it they didn't, <laughs> i don't got eggs yet <laughs> that's it i don't care anymore he's like four days no babies dude, what is this <laughs> Oh man, yeah. The breeding reptiles in general is is a massive test of patience. But oh, when you my. get to something like green trees and emerald oh, tree boas, something like that, just the wait for them to mature alone mm-hmm. is a wait. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can totally, I totally understand that. I mean, even this myself this year, I was like continuously getting anxious as mm-hmm. I see ovulations. I'm like, okay. Time for this countdown to begin. <laughs> I I'll, I'll say this year I was uh, more patient than I was last year. Last year I was very anxious, just like sitting out, but waiting. Okay, when are you gonna lay eggs? When are you gonna lay eggs? When are you? And then this year I was like basing everything off of last year, and my females went like really long last year between their pre-lay shed and when they actually laid their eggs. So I was like, oh, I still got like another two weeks, and then one of my females laid eggs. Three days ago, and I was like, "Whoa, you! That's like half the amount of time as last year." Because last year, I think my female <laughs> went like forty-two days or something between when she had her shed and when she laid her eggs. And this year, it was like twenty-something days. And I was like, "Holy crap!" Wait, you mean it wasn't exactly thirty days? It was not exactly thirty days. Believe it or not, believe it or not. You no, know that means that they probably reabsorbed, right? <laughs> it's gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <ooh. laughs> just saying it's uh, nice it's nice to know how things work yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then i got another female who like i wasn't sure if she was gonna go um i didn't see an ovulation from her but she started yeah, acting <laughs> and then she uh after she just had her shed she just started coiling tight like she's got eggs i'm like okay and then i'm feeling her i'm like okay you got eggs so we'll see and this is a repeat pairing so the parent the eggs that i just got were from one of the girls who went last year bred to a different male, and then the girl who's yet to lay her eggs is a marble to marble, and that pairing is the one I did last year, and we got some awesome babies out of that, so I'm hoping that we'll get more good eggs this year because uh, it was her first year reproducing last year. She had 16 eggs, three went bad, mm-hmm. and it was a split clutch between me and Dan Magano. So if you check out Dan Magano Reptiles on YouTube – you can see some of his babies that he's got back from that because I think he kept everything from that clutch. I think so, yeah. And that um, was a really good it was a ass. fucking awesome clutch. <laughs> and I, I I kept back pretty much everything from that clutch. I let go of two animals. One of them went to Jason Chapman up in Maine. Um, basically, 
the, some of those animals came through him. T- so I, and I always hook him up. So me and him go back and forth. So I sent him one of my babies. that was going to be a hold back. It's got like a reverse stripe. And then I sold one baby that I'm kind of regretting selling. It had like a full stripe, um, almost a full stripe. And it was like this crazy, nice marble. And uh, I put it up for like a whole, whole back price. Like, I don't really want to sell it. And someone hit me up an hour after I posted and we're like, I'll take it. And they bought it. And so, uh, Peter has got that one, and I'm like, oof, man, that thing's so nice. Yep. I, I'm kind of bummed that I sold it, but I'm glad they in went a, to him. In a couple years' time, be like, hey, you still got you that You still snake. got that. He's I'm got right. some really nice snakes, so he's going to make cool stuff with it. But <laughs> That's I'm, cool. I'm like, hey, hey, yeah, hey. hey remember, so, remember me. I was talking about last year. I, I didn't really want to hold anything back. But Lucas, what is your? are you going to plan on selling all your baby green tree pythons, or are you going to you gonna hold some back? Holding them for a year. Yep. I have four holdbacks already. You already picked out four that you're like, okay, no matter what, these ones are staying. So and then the rest of you are just going to take it as you, as you Yeah. So I have two that are like actual holdbacks. Mm-hmm. And then I have two that have like these sort of kink deformities on them. Mm-hmm. They were born out the egg like that. So mm-hmm. I'm going to keep them. Hopefully they do well. I'll be selling them as like a pet to like a good friend of mine or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as of now, four holdbacks. Mm. Mm. That's um out of 10. That's... That's a very. It's better than uh, what I did. I was gonna <laughs> say I'm trying to think how to word that. Like you're I, doing uh, better than Rob. Yeah. He, <laughs> Rob. I Rob was... tells me for the entire breeding season last year, I'm only gonna hold back like maybe one or two from each clutch, and everything. and you know we'll, you know we'll kind of take it from there. And as soon as you say that, for like we'll take it from there. Uh, you are opening yourself up to the bullshit. Yeah. And uh, how many babies you still have from last year, Rob? I kept most of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I sold way less than I kept. He I, sold the number he wanted to originally hold. That's back. pretty much what I did. Yeah. I sold like <laughs> I think three babies from the garble clutch, and then like five babies from the uh, skunk, the spooky clutch. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't sell anything for the Marvel Clutch side, that one holdback one. So I literally sold I, – I only got rid of 10 snakes or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, out of out, 50. I was say out of how many? Out yeah. of 50 that I produced. Yeah. Oh, boy. And then, and then the carpet pythons, too. I forgot about that. I held back four carpet pythons out of the clutch that I produced, too. But I don't think any of my carpets are going to go this year. I was not focused on breeding them at all. I literally was just like, I really just want to focus on a couple of these Borneos, and I really wanted to try to do scrubs and so – We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So if ever you're feeling bad about how many animals you're You're holding back, back, just remember Rob. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm going to highlight that because that's real. A professional collector. Yeah. Hey, I mean, (laughs) I mean, I mean, I can always let him go down the road if I need to. Yeah, but see, she but see that do. like if I need to, yeah. there's there's like six E's. Yeah, I, if in I there. need like, yeah. to. <laughs> I need to. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, you know, if you need to. I'm pretty excited. I get it. So, I get it. so yeah. uh, so Lucas, so you bred green tree. So the green trees were the only thing you bred this past season. Yep. Uh, are you planning on breeding anything? this coming season are you going to try the green trees again or what are you, what are you thinking um i'm gonna let the female go f- off for a year mm-hmm. i'll breed her again t- like 2023 okay um mm-hmm. hopefully if i can get my hog noses up to size i'll have them ready for next year pair of ball pythons this year if i can get them up to size Great. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that should be it should all be right it. cool cool I dig it. I like the the diversity aspect. So I always tell Lucas because he's got a pretty diverse collection. If, if you don't, if you don't already follow him, you should follow him on Instagram. On Instagram at Cobra Keeper Junior. Uh, but he's got a pretty diverse collection between the green trees and the emeralds. He's got hog noses, a bunch of different colubrid species, some ball pythons because everybody has ball pythons for the most part. Four of them, especially for for now, just four. I think you said something about getting more. So <laughs> you're like, I need to trade out the emeralds for ball by them. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, I'd never hit a woman he's before, like, but Rob, you're like, crossing so, a line right now. Yeah. 
He's like, Rob, I like you, but I've got some pent up anger. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hit Dan because Dan hits harder back, but, uh, but it looks like he could take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lucas, I, I wanted to ask you this because I am not a young person anymore. Um, oh, stop. Okay, uh, here's the deal. I am not. <laughs> I am not where I was ten years ago. I'll say that. Well, fuck me either. At 22 years old. Yeah. Okay, so I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you think? What direction do you think that the hobby is headed in right now with the people who are coming up right now, the next gen? Because I got my opinions about how I think it's going right now, but. I don't. I'm not plugged in as much as a lot of other people are when it comes to like the younger, the younger people who are coming into it. Like when I see people who are under the age of 18 online, unless they're doing something really crazy that like immediately grabs my interest, I usually don't follow it. I'm, I'm just like I want to see where they go because there's a lot of people who get in and then get out or you know keep snakes for a year and then oh, I just want to have one. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, as far as like seeing people like you who are like I see you're doing all these big things. You've had this background into it. And it's like, you're going to be around for a minute. You're going to be, you're going to be doing things. Oh, so yeah. ball by the, no. So, <laughs> but what do you, what, what direction do you think? What do you see a lot of these younger people uh, going? What direction do you see them going? And what, what do you think that uh, it looks like in your opinion? Industry wise, I, mm, I'm probably saying most of the people are going to be like pet keeping people. Mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't really seen a lot of people like, talk to me about the aspects of breeding mm -hmm. like uh cory is a good one up and coming ball python breeder fucking doing amazing but there's just there's a lot of people that want just want to keep them for fun mm -hmm. i mean a bunch of stuff is going up in popularity right now it is wild wild pricing on things are going silly right now True. and um I, honestly i'm i'm not when I was younger, like, you know, when I talk to my friends and stuff, we're always like, oh, we're going to breed a bunch of stuff. We're going to make a bunch of stuff. We're going to put this together and breed that thing. And and I feel like a lot of people now, are, like you're mentioning, are, are kind of pushing more towards that. I just want to have, like, a couple cool pet reptiles. I just like them. I want to, like, observe them and, and do all this sort of stuff. And I think that's I think that's good for the hobby in general. Like, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, well, no, we need more people who want to breed ball pythons or breed, you know, corn snakes or Don't do projects. Yeah, I know. But there's a lot of people who are like, I just want to do it. And then, you know, it might not end up being for them. Yeah. But when when we look at the way that more people now are just getting into it to kind of just enjoy the animals themselves. I think I, I appreciate that a lot because it just grows the industry. Yeah. I think that that really does grow the industry and it allows um, the people who do have a push for it. Like if we want to, you know, uh, people like us who like want to produce some things, it's not oversaturating the market. It's not, you know, at certain point you reach this, um, the saturation point where, you know, people are breeding ball pythons. They're like, I can't even sell my ball pythons. Cause there's so many people who've got ball pythons. But as we're, sh that's because the last 10, 15 years, everyone who's been sold a ball python has been here. You need to breed this thing. Yeah, and yeah. there's hardly any people who have been like, well, I just want like a pretty looking pet snake. And I think that that's the, the main direction we should be pushing in as like as a whole is to push people, you know, you don't have to breed it. Like you can just have a cool pet snake that you like. And, yep. and then the people who want to breed it, who are like actually are willing to put in that time and dedication and energy and money into it then you're able to share this thing with the world that, you know, not everyone else is trying to do. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's, <clears throat> which we've talked about before, but that's like one of the nicer parts as social media expands and, you know, anybody who's got a phone can take a video of themselves or of their hands, uh, <laughs> looking at stuff. But, uh, there's a lot more people now who are like, especially as bioactive enclosures mm -hmm. get more popular. Or they're like, yeah, look at my awesome animal in the little slice of the jungle habitat. that I've got in my home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's, that's quite wonderful. Um, and yeah, I, I think we, we're starting to see that resurgence just back into keeping, mm -hmm. you know, so I totally get with that. Yeah. And, and the other thing is there's people are starting to branch out more. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who, you know, they're keeping stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm glad that you like that. 
because that means that I don't I don't have to breed it. It means that you know there's somebody who's going to make sure that this species is still in the hobby as someone that's invested in it. Um, because I look at some things like um, I'm trying to think of some of this good example, like maybe the prehensile tailed skinks, mm-hmm. where they used to be super common and they basically dis- disappeared. And now the, I see there's like some groups of people who are just like I Medicaid. love these yeah. things and I will make sure that they are they're around and that you know if at the very least i'm keeping them and i'm enjoying them and i can share them with people i think that's huge what i really what i really want to see and like i don't know if this is something that could realistically happen in the united states because it's just the way that our society is but i would love to see reptile shows as opposed to reptile expos like they do in indonesia where they have like a best in show where they oh, grade yeah, the yeah. animals on like, like their body AKC. weight yeah, yeah exactly like akc like a cat or a dog show where people can bring in uh you know you know don't let everyone hold everything but you know people can come and see like really nice all the people who keep green trees in the area bring in their nicest green tree pythons and just put them on display for a day where people can take a look at them and see them and then you know you got best in show and you can have graded lines and all this different stuff i would love to see something like that where it's not just based on i need to make a sale i need to sell this so i can blah, 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 buy this and do that if people uh, proud to have the animal yeah just just to appreciate off. it and then it gives the opportunity for people who are um, newer to maybe see something they haven't seen before or see something unique, like people bringing in their high end Panther chameleons or, you know, their crazy leeches or, you know, whatever it is, you know, have sections, a gecko section, a large constrictors, a ball pythons, Mm -hmm. a chameleon, bearded dragon, that sort of thing. I would love to see, I would personally plan a trip around going to a show like that just to see the things that people bring. I think that would be really cool. You better take me. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Take pick me. I saw Bob Wu was posting something that he was like, we should have a reptile conference, like kind of like a carpet fest, where we, we all just yeah. go someplace and all hang out with a bunch of reptile people. And he's like, we should do it in Jamaica. And I was like, I don't know if I'm um, going to go to Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, yeah not, not necessarily the best place for gay guys but, yeah you know, yeah <laughs> kind of like murder but you know <laughs> yeah. you, hey man you, you want to host it in florida you want to do it in tampa yeah, let's do it yeah can we can we miami go little, miami let's do it yeah a little somewhere nicer than my people <laughs> <laughs> do miami zoo everybody hangs out at the zoo for the day looks at all the exhibits and stuff and then maybe cool. do some uh some everglades field herping at night man i think that that would be mint imagine like 70 reptile people all together doing that just hitting up the zoo that zoo is huge so it, it wouldn't is, even it be is. overwhelmed I was, i'm thinking in my brain i'm like <clears throat> that would be obnoxious once we left the zoo because yeah. everybody would be yeah. able to do their own shit yeah at mm. the zoo and then whatever and then you meet and then if at that point <laughs> yeah <laughs> really crazy. not everybody can go on the field herp that would be like 50 cars like <laughs> Dude, you imagine road cruising is, is more like 40 uh, people 40 yeah, cars all in like line the, uh, the the uh the covid graduation parties where it's just like <laughs> everyone's you just driving drive down and stare and then you keep it going that's road cruising. the first the person who finds it back. yeah first person who finds it has to hold it up off the ground yeah, everybody, everybody else drives everybody by, drives by. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next person in line gets to be the next person to find something yeah 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 Hey man, I'm just saying. I wish I was like this much more tied into Florida reptile keepers because I would be like, let's fucking do this. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Hmm. Lucas, have you done any any field herping? Mm-hmm. Oh, right, let's yeah. let's talk about it because I love field okay, herping. Wait. So... Yeah, field herping. I know we need to talk about more about field herping, but we need to talk about field herping afterwards. Yes. Like, talk to Mike and. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do All some right, field herping. So... In Georgia, mm-hmm. few uh, few copperheads. I love copperheads. I have a black rat living underneath my house. Yeah. Um, few eastern kings too. I'm really surprised. Yeah. I would be so geeked if I saw a wild king snake. I'd be like, oh, I'm right there. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, bugging out. And then out of like the six or seven years I've been in Georgia, not a single corn snake. Really? Not a single corn snake. And that's why you can't keep them. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Sounds to me like they're not native anymore. Uh, (laughs) Um, Florida as well, dude. The Everglades. I went with my dad and my sister for my spring break. Mm -hmm. Like 
12 cotton mouths. Wow. My lifer scarlet snake. Ooh. I believe my lifer scarlet king too. Mm. And then like a bunch of alligators. Hell Super yeah. Fun. Hell yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I I feel like if I go to Florida, my big things that I I really 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 want to see Eastern Diamondbacks. Yes. Oof. I really want to see coral snakes. I'm really jealous because Ryan Martinez, you keep it Ryan, he found a coral snake the other day and I was like, I saw it. Oh, I yes. saw it. So excited. Yes. I was, Dude, that, that was probably like the coolest part when I went field herping out out that way. It was like finding that Eastern Diamondback. Mm. I was like, yeah. yeah. It's like, such a big <laughs> rattlesnake. It's, it's a so amazing. Also, like, Coming from a place up here where like finding a timber is like so one rare. of the rarest things out here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. Like they're so endangered. It's not even funny. Yeah. Um, so to just find any crotalid mm -hmm. in general, after like spending your entire life of being like, you one might, day I'll see one. <laughs> yeah, you might see a sliver of the tail and then it's gone and you're not allowed to fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> you you know? Don't even look at it too close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because if anything happens, it's your ass. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, man. Yeah, legit. Is there anything that's like your favorite thing to find out where you're at, Lucas? Copperheads. Mm. I mm. actually, me and my dad actually found, well, no, we actually rescued a timber mm -hmm. that we had for a couple of days, and then we released back into the wild. That was very fun. Mm, I love timber. What what color was it? Was it like a lighter phase one, or was it a little bit darker? It was like it had the orange and it had the stripe. Mm, okay. Yeah, I do like the all black ones though. Mm. Those are my favorite. Yeah. So for those for those of you who are listening who might not know, in the state of Georgia, it's uh, illegal to keep <clears throat> sorry i have to project i'm sorry it is <clears throat> no uh it's illegal to keep uh exotic venomous exotic snakes. venomous so you can keep native venomous and but you cannot keep native non-venomous yeah. which is why we're joking about the corn snake thing uh, um, it's wild georgia you cannot own pet corn snakes yep sorry but I but you can to, have copperheads and yeah, cotton exactly, mouths. Exactly. So I wanted to like throw that out there in case anyone was like, I don't understand how this kid can like go catch a copperhead and like have it at his house, but he can't do, do that with a corn snake. <laughs> Georgia law, guys. It's hey. a great, it's a great it's thing. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a awesome. great thing. <laughs> Too funny. Oh. Too funny. Yeah, especially when you don't find any any of what they're like you can't keep that you're like i don't even see them mm -hmm. like hey look, shit. i would rather keep copyrights than corn snakes though. true fair true right fair true fair. 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 Mm -hmm. although i'm just saying my my super crazy pink corn snake i think it looks cool i like the yoga tees that i got so yeah. with my very reduced pattern copperheads yeah hey, i love mm -hmm. those those mm -hmm. uh, do you you should get some striped ones that's all i'm saying you want to talk to my mom about that? <laughs> Go ahead. She's she's right there in the comments. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> I, have a, I have a male. Uh, you got you got to give him, you got to hit him with the babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I I as soon as I can get venomous of my own, I'm definitely getting some striped copperheads. Absolutely. And transpecos and broadbands. <laughs> and a copperhead room. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> and black tail rattlesnakes. I just I think yeah. they're cool. I think and they're then cool. and then everything's holdbacks. Yep. <laughs> and then rhino vipers. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Pretty so much. so we all know what Rob's venomous room will entail. Oh, it's gonna be just <laughs> these chunky, chubby little snakes. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and then outside of that room is gonna be the scrubs. They're gonna be ostracized. They're sorting everything by uh, body type. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. No body shaming. We're not just body, body shaming. We're not body just, shaming. Uh, just organization. Yeah. Just organization. <laughs> so Lucas, what if you could get one species that you don't have right now, what would it be? What what's next on the, the docket? I want to say basins. Mm. But after looking at all your scrubs i'm just i'm just saying we got to play with some more scrubs a pair of malukans would be nice oh uh, yeah everybody everybody nice. yeah me too i want some malukans too okay <laughs> but ba basins will always be my dream snake hell yeah yeah 
And you know what? Yeah, if you are letting go of some baby green tree pythons, what you do is you just stack that baby green tree python money and then buy basins. <laughs> yep. That's <clears throat> high risk, high reward. I mean, honestly, <laughs> the basins are easier to take care of than oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of the yeah, other of arboreal them. stuff. So it is true. They're they're really tolerant. They're <laughs> so easy going. It's, yeah, it's so it's easy going. They're so nice too. Yes. Yeah, except the one that bit me. But yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, look, there's always it one was being in a accosted. Bunch. Yeah, there's always one in a bunch. Just like everybody at Nerd's cool, except Dan. Ah, uh, <laughs> Dan is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's too we've, funny. We've spent the last couple days working with Dan around the building exclusively. And, yeah, pretty much. And uh, if you guys, if you guys follow Nerd, you still have no clue who Dan is because Dan's never in any videos. He's I've posted very, on the Instagram once or twice. Yeah, he's very much like behind the scenes, but he's uh He's the absolute jokester. Yes. In the bit, like the absolute. And, and the uh, story guy. He got some crazy stories. He has got some stories. Crazy I'll tell you stories. what, boy. Yeah, that's pretty true. So we've had that experience for the last 48 hours. Oh, <laughs> more, more. More. That's true. Murimar. Hashtag King of the Clowns. Oh, King of the Clowns. Murimar, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas is coming back a different uh, child. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Spending an afternoon with Dan will age you like at least a year. <laughs> That's true. He's an adult already. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I got hair on my chest now. I don't know where it came from. Oh, no. It's something to do with Dan. Oh, my gosh. King of clowns. That's <laughs> right. King of clowns. He put Rogaine. He was, he was just texting me pictures of clowns. That he just Good. Because he, he's like, I got, I'm hatching out a bunch of clowns. And I was like, I need one more clown girl, like a, either a girl clown or a combo clown. And he's mm -hmm. like, well, I hatched out a ton of clowns, so I'm going to have some. And I was like, okay, yeah. just set one aside. I'll start painting. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he does have a shit ton of clowns. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you want like a 16? And I was like, no, 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 no. I want to be able to sell them. I want stuff that's yeah, yeah, under yeah. five hundred dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, this is this is actually this is a great comment. I have to highlight this. <laughs> Does Kev still start wigging out at the sound of Dan's key? Instantly. <laughs> and like you he feels it in the air before you hear it. It's like true. I don't even hear it. And Kevin's like, Ugh. and I'm like, oh was like, Dan's gotta I, I be was, coming up yeah. here someplace. Yeah. yeah. I was in the office today mm -hmm. and I'm just chilling with Jake. We're talking. And I hear his truck. I'm like, oh god! No, no, here it's it comes. Like, here it's he happening. Comes. And then you, you hear you hear the stairs going. You hear the. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh. No. Usually, if Kevin's in the room and that happens, he runs. Oh, he, he leaves like, runs right away. away. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he still freaks out about that. And if you're ever in the building, and yeah, if you're ever in the building and Kevin's like around and you want him to not be around just jingle some keys really oh, loudly yeah. and, and he yeah. runs away Dude, my my these are my backup set of keys and they're kind of like they're loud kind of like dance keys so when i put them on my waist when i'm walking around it they jingle a lot yeah and i've seen kevin like look out of the room like he's in room five <laughs> sticks his head out of the room he's like <laughs> looking around to see if dan's there and i grab my keys i'm like oh my bad man my bad <laughs> that's me it's just me it's not dan <laughs> That's so great. I think we should all just get a keychain. Oh, that's. Who? I'm just saying. Let's just corner Kevin in a room full of ball pythons and just start wiggling keys. Oh, uh, no. Good. You can do that. He knows jujitsu. Gonna... He'll, <laughs> he'll choke you out with the ponytail. Yeah. Mm. Dude. Oh, oh. <clears throat> okay. I have to tell this story only because it's great. When we were talking about the field herping. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday. Mm -hmm. with, so Kevin's like, let me check the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know oh, what's going on. And no. his phone wouldn't load. So I grabbed his ponytail and wiggled it in front of the phone screen. And, and it, boom, it unlocked. It, loaded. it unlocked right. immediately. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I was like, oh. the power of the ponytail. It is the power been, of the ponytail. Revealed. <laughs> Got some crazy oh powers. That's it, some crazy powers. It does have some crazy powers. That's for oh sure. my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of nerd stories we can talk about. Over the we're, last here we're here so... talking to Lucas. Well, some of these stories could involve Lucas. <laughs> most of them. Most of them. <clears throat> so I want I want to bring this up because uh, I, I saw that your your mom brought it up in the comments a second ago and and I think it's a, an interesting topic, especially since I think the three of us have had slightly different iterations of it and that's 
the impact, you know, we're, we're all those crazy kids. We still are the crazy kid, but um, <laughs> we're all those crazy kids. who are like, I want to have snakes or reptiles in the house. And because and, mm-hmm. I like them. And we've all had like the, I don't want to say the three extremes, but three slightly different iterations of supportive parents. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so we're like, Rob's mom was already keeping tarantulas and stuff before he was born, but his dad was like, nope. no snakes in the house. No snakes, you know, like yeah. my, my folks were cool with me keeping lizards and amphibians and everything. And then it took me years of never leaving them alone, <laughs> you know, before I could get a snake. And you were like four years old. Look at my ball. Look, pythons. I had some ball pie though. Yeah. So, so what, what is that? like because i know that there's there's quite a few people especially younger people who are like i want to start keeping snakes or like Mm -hmm. i like snakes and maybe i want to keep one and parents are like no like absolutely not um so what what was that like not having to deal with that you know essentially being literally born into or was your dad like i'm disappointed i thought you would be into cooler things Uh, um (laughs) Well, I mean, like I said, my passion by myself didn't start like four years ago. Mm -hmm. And he actually bought the emerald for me. Oh, damn. That's mint. That's where it's at. Yeah. And like I said, it was very fun having Mm -hmm. two supportive parents that worked their ass off to make me have the ability to do what I love doing. Mm -hmm. And I have a few people that message me saying, oh, you're so lucky. How do you like how do I get my parents to let me have the ability to like do my passion and fulfill my dreams? I'm like, it takes time. It does. Like they probably see most of it as like evil. Mm-hmm. Like snakes are bad and all that stuff. But just a couple YouTube videos, a couple nerd videos, you know, that sh- it should work out. It, work out. it definitely can. It definitely can. I mean, it, it takes a long time. Like a lot of people don't see all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Like, you know, when they, when people are like, Oh my God, you know, you, you just have this like amazing collection and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I've spent years and years getting together animals and working and, it doesn't you know, happen overnight. It does not it happen does not overnight. Happen. I've had stuff that I was like super pumped about that I raised up, and then all of a sudden it's, a, I, it's not the right sex. And then I've had animals <laughs> that I'm super pumped about, and then they just randomly die for no reason. And it's like not anything that you can predict that's going to happen. Like mm-hmm. you, uh, you know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't put right out there. Like even even the people who are transparent who talk about, oh, I had an animal I was born with a kink or or this sort of thing or that sort of thing. They don't talk about everything. Like you, it's just not plausible to talk about every little thing that goes into it. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, even when I was first getting snakes, like I, I wasn't allowed to get snakes until I was 13, but I was interested in snakes when I was two, like when I was two and a half and three years old, when, when I was five and people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I used to tell them a herpetologist. And then they'd be like, why does this child know what herpes is? And my parents would be like, no, that's not. That's nope, not it. nope. 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 That's nope. 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 Yeah. Nope. Nope. And then the five-year-old would be like, no, no, no. I want, I know that you think that it's something different, but I want to do things with reptiles. Like I want to keep reptiles. And, and they're uh, like, you should just learn what herpes is. Yeah. They should. <laughs> like, you should call it something else. Yeah. You should not, you should not say herpetology. <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, from the time that I was five years old until the time that I was 13, I love snakes. I'll go out and catch snakes almost every day during the summertime. And I literally have got, um, journals like in elementary school, they used to have you write journals just so you practice writing. And all of my journals were like during the beginning of the year, like, uh, September, August, the time. Oh, I found a snake out in my yard today. I found a salamander. I found three salamanders. I fed my pet tarantula. And then as soon as it got to like October, I was like, I'm depressed. There's no snakes outside. (laughs) I'm sad. It's very cold. It's unpleasant. And then (laughs) once like March, April started to come back around, I'm like, Oh, the salamanders are back out. And, and, uh, you know, I was into all that stuff even when I was younger, but I wasn't allowed to keep snakes until I turned 13, until I started high school. So, like, people were like, oh, my God, you keeping snakes for such a long time. And I was like, yeah, there was a lot of time where I wasn't even allowed to keep snakes. Yeah. So I don't take it for granted that, like, I, I am in this very, like, lucky position. And, you know, I've worked really hard to get to this spot. But a lot of people just think that it happens overnight, and it really doesn't. It really, really doesn't. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've told I've told people plenty of times like it took me six years of like pestering mm-hmm. my parents um, before I could finally get a snake. They were co- lizards, amphibians, yeah, whatever. Yep, same thing. Cool, yeah, fine, no big deal whatsoever. But it came to a snake. It didn't didn't matter. But I was also the kid that aimed high because <laughs> that's what I do. So You're like, like I want a king cobra. No, 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 no. It was like first first pet snake. I wanted it to be a berm. And uh, I didn't know any better, Rob. I didn't I know, know any better. No one did but, back then. Yeah, I know. So I wanted it to be a berm, but I I knew how big they got. Your parents. My parents did, did not. not. <laughs> so I told them it only got to a certain size. Oh my god! And then my mom did her own research and was like, "Listen here, you little fucker." <laughs> uh, did I ever tell you about my the story of when I got my second snakes? Like, so I got my first snake, and then like eight months later, I convinced my dad to let me get another pair of snakes. Um, and I've been eyeballing these Solomon Island ground bows oh, yeah, at yeah, Regal yeah, Reptiles. Yeah. So my dad's afraid of snakes, but he was like, you know, I'd been saving up money and saving up money and they were like pretty expensive. So, um, I had bought some Viper boas from them. They weren't eating. So I brought, I, asked, I called the guys who run the shop and I was like, Hey, look, I've tried everything. I've tried, you know, birds, lizards, everything to get these things to eat. I've, I keep all my parameters really good. I've been saving up. I really want to trade them in because I initially wanted the Solomon Island ground bows. I just couldn't afford them at the time. And so they're like, cool, that's fine. Bring in the Viper bows. You can trade them towards the Solomon Island ground bows. And so I was, you know, I brought all this information to my dad. I was like, look, they're small. They're dwarf boa species. They only get three feet long, blah, 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 all this stuff. So he's like, you know what? You saved up your money. Let's do it. So we drive down to Rhode Island. That day was like a cold, rainy day. So I go inside. I bring in the Viper bows and I show them, like, look, I've had them for, you know, two months. They, they're starting to lose a little bit of weight, but they're still healthy and everything. So they're looking at them. Okay, cool. Let's go to the back to grab the Solomon Island ground bow. So we go into their back room. They had this like big warehouse where they had all the snakes and stuff and monitors and alligators and all that sort of stuff. And so we go into the back room. And as we're going back there to grab these Solomon Island ground bows, one of the employees is just getting back from a birthday program. Mm -hmm. And he had pulled out a big Burmese python, like probably a 14 foot Burmese python, like a legit solid 14 foot (laughs) Burmese python. And he's taking it from the bag or the bin that he had it in and putting it back into his enclosure. But this is like kind of back behind the scenes. So the employee goes in, the employee that was with me goes into the back room. I follow him into the back room and I turn to my dad. I'm like, dad, don't come in here. You don't want to, you don't want to see this. Cause my dad's like afraid of snakes. And so my dad's like, what? He sticks his head in the door and he's like, Oh hell no. no. <laughs> he like runs back out to the front of the store and so I grab the ground bows, like we put them in a bag and I, I come back up to the front and I'm paying the guys, you know, the, the difference in the price and everything. And the guy goes to my dad and he goes, you know, it's only like six months before these ones are going to be that big. And I was like, shut up, shut up. You say that he's not going to let me take these. He's, he, Oh, don't lie to him like that. That's not funny. <laughs> I was so scared, man. Rob fought every one of those employees. I, that was, day. <laughs> I was real tempted. I was real tempted. Because I was like, dude, you want to make this sale or not? Yeah. Oh, ooh. <laughs> uh, imagine they did get that big one. No, I don't want to imagine that. Have you been bit by one yet? No. It is unpleasant. It's They've got some teeth on them. My pair. I love them. But... They've been my, one of my favorite. They're probably one of my favorite boas out there i just love solomon island ground bows. any of the kendo stuff is amazing mm. and that was my second and third snake because i bought a pair of them and i had them for like seven or eight years they the two that i got from regal were adults when they got them they had them at their store for five years before i got them Damn. and i had them for another seven years after that That's so they're probably like 30 years old boas yeah. sheesh yeah <clears throat> you can keep them alive <laughs> yeah hey man hey that was, but that was my second snakes. I went from a ball python to Solomon Island ground bows. Aiming high, ball python. I thought enamored. they were cool. I thought they were cool as hell, man. No, they definitely. I was they enamored. Were. They absolutely they were, were cool. dude. I remember when I was working at, at my local pet shop when I was a kid, and like we got a Solomon Island ground bow, and then somebody just like brought in. And I was like, "What is? What? That? Why does its head look like a viper?" Yeah, I was like, "I really like this snake." You know what? <laughs> the, you know if, uh, what else is funny? When I got that, the kid who worked at the store was like. They're not venomous, but they look venomous. So you can like scare people. So you can like let it bite you and go, oh my God, a viper bit me. And people look at the head and they'll be like, oh my God, a viper bit him. And I was like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? This is like late 90s, early 2000s. So, this, I mean, 
This it was, was a different early, time. Yeah, it's a different time. It was a very oh, different early time. 2000. That still happens today. I know it does yeah, still happen but it, today, but, but that's back then you didn't get the shit for it. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about a little kid at a reptile show saying that Chris geckos are venomous? No, oh, no. In front of a bunch of parents. So when they see the little kids holding it, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the vendor going, look. It does look, not. Look, look, it's no. fine. It's fine. <laughs> Literally has gecko bite them anywhere and everywhere. It's I think like, it's, it's fine. I think it's funny when people do a tour and I the first room that they go into is like the big snake room. So we take out a reticulated python. And after I've had it out for five minutes, there's it, almost always someone who's like, so is this venomous? And I'm like, you think that I would let you just yeah. sit on the floor with a giant venomous snake? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. I don't know, man. Rob likes to play jokes. Are, uh, not like that. <laughs> I do like jokes, but I don't like that one. If you haven't, if anyone is listening to this has not visited Nerd yet, um, in our bathroom that we've got upstairs, there on the the toilet lid cover, I put a tarantula sticker so that when new people come in there and they lift up the toilet seat, there's like a giant tarantula sitting on the toilet. I thought that was funny. Until I did a birthday party for like a bunch of six year olds and a little girl did not realize that it was a sticker and she came out oh. crying. <laughs> oh, She's like, there's a giant tarantula in the bathroom. And I was like, there is no tarantula in the bathroom. She's like, it's on the toilet. And I was like, oh, that's a sticker. My bad. Oh. <laughs> oh. Rob is crushing it. I He's made it real. I've made mistakes. <laughs> he is creeping it real, guys, for many years. Yeah. <laughs> I like practical jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um all right, Lucas. So what would be like the next species that you you got to get your hands on for your collection? Besides basins mm -hmm. and cinnamon milk snakes. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, besides basins and Sinaloans, <laughs> I, would, I would have to say scrubs, mm. white lips. Mm. That, that's, that's it. I think that's it. Hell yeah. I'm All good right. on colubrids. Yeah. I'm good on berms and retics. I am. I'm done with those. They're just a lot of work, man. You know, when you yeah. can accidentally pull your back trying to take your pet out, uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe I don't need it. Four berms and two retics is enough. That's a lot. Yeah. Oh no, three retics. Think think of just the amount of caging that that needs. I can think about how many other species I can fit into that same amount of space, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need retics. Exactly. Scrubs. Exactly. exactly. You can have a lot nicer scrubs. I'm just saying. True. You're not wrong. You're not you know wrong. what's crazy? In Massachusetts, you cannot own reticulated pythons or super dwarf reticulated pythons, but. Or anacondas. You can't own yellow anacondas or green anacondas. No. But you can own scrubs without a permit, and you can own berms without a permit. Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah, exactly. We've been asking that question for years. Yeah, it's basically because anacondas are giant. I saw the movie with J-Lo. And then reticulated pythons are long. Oh, my gosh. They're so scary. <laughs> Look at how long they are. I've never heard anybody say it that way. That's exactly. Reticulated pythons, they're long. Oh, it's oh, long. No. It's the world record longest snake. <laughs> That's their whole reasoning behind it. It is. Dude, it, that is. There is no other rationale to it. No, I know. <clears throat> That's. They just will never come out. Oh, they won't that. admit that. I would love to hear Bobberini say that, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Him or Tom. See, Tom is gone, though. He just retired. I know, so I know. It would have been more valuable coming from him. Yes. But. Yeah, it is uh, what it you is. You get Bobberini to say that. <laughs> They're <it>. long. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mass Fish and Wildlife. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, Lucas, do you have any plans to go um, traveling for the future, or what's your next trip? Because you're you're up here for another week, right? Yeah, I leave Monday. Mm. Mm. So, and, I have. August Daytona. Hell yeah. I'm going to be wearing a monokini on the beach. A what? Nothing. Don't look it up. Okay. <laughs> um, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, October but I blame your mother. Yep. 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 <laughs> a banana hammock. Here's a banana hammock. October Tinley. And then I believe my mom said 2023 New Zealand. Damn. You're trying to pet it to a tar? Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? Either that or that. Uh, 
the gecko. What's oh, the, Naltinas the, geckos. Yeah, Naltinas Naltinas yeah. gray eye. Mm, that's probably. I, <laughs> I love those geckos, man. They are so cool. I know somebody locally who has some. Locally, as in a couple hours from here. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's oh, money. Yeah. Oh, it's money. I do want to visit all the tropical places like Costa Rica, Suriname. Dude, I was talking to some people that said they want to do a herper trip to, to Costa Rica. Like, a like a like we book out the, the resort yes. and have yeah. all of us go to Costa Rica. And I could see us getting into some trouble doing that. <laughs> just no scally. Just, just the people that I know who would want to go. Yeah, just no scally. Mm. It'll be okay. Just no scally. Mm. <laughs> oh, Nelly. <laughs> I think it'd be great. Ah. I mean, what could go wrong? Mm. <laughs> what could go wrong is go. like the famous last words. I'm going to Borneo. I am. I am here for it. Yeah. Here's the deal. I I encourage everyone to go feel the herping, and I I would like people to go to Borneo. I don't know if going to Borneo with me is the best idea. No, hey, please. do you listen? Uh, Jeremy doesn't listen to podcasts that much, but I've been listening to the Herpiculture podcast recently and Snakes and Stogies and those guys. And they just got back from Field Herping, um, Field Herping, Texas. And I think it was Justin who was like, man, I don't know if I'm cut out for Field Herping. <laughs> He's like, those guys went hard. And all that they did the whole time is Field Herping. He's like, I thought we were going to do some road cruising and like maybe look around a little bit. And it's like, no, nah, Rob Stone is hardcore man and when he's out there he's like got every hour plan and that's exactly how i am like when i went to arizona i was just like every moment i want to be doing something that's related to reptiles looking for reptiles so mm -hmm. for the for people who are like casually like oh i'd like to go field herping someplace i'm not fun to go with <laughs> it's like me i feel like well, me and rob stone would get along really well because we'd just be like go 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 we'll yeah. sleep for two hours and then let's do this well we 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 got a small experience of that when we went down to Florida for, yes. for Carpet Fest. Yeah. Johnny and I were like, we, we need, need to take a nap. And I was like, like, I'm going to go. I need to find a trail. Yeah, I literally <laughs> I literally went out and was like, hey, you guys are going to go rest. I'm going to go find a trail to hike for the next two hours. Yeah, right. And it wasn't even good weather or anything. It was not like hot outside. I was just like, I'm just going to go look for stuff. Rob came back and was like, I found a cat. Yep, I saw a wild feral <laughs> cat. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Well, not a, another thing literally yeah. i didn't see anything else just that but i uh i i would love to go field herping with people but i i feel like a lot of people would not like to go field herping with me it's, why because i'm good go 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 if you if you were we when we went to utah we did eight miles a day roughly roughly eight miles a day walking not including oh, all the oh. Yeah. yeah, not including any of the road cruising that we did. So we did eight miles of hiking every day and then road cruised th through the night. Huh. So we, it was like hardcore. Like, I, it's a lot. It's just a lot. For people who are, are not used to doing that sort of stuff, it's a lot. Like eight miles is a lot. And a lot of the terrain is up and down in elevation and all that sort of stuff. And it's just... It can be very tiring. I'll tell you what. When I got back, I was very tired. But <laughs> while I was out there, I was like, I spent all this money. I need to do this trip. We're going to do this. <laughs> Every night, I'm like, maybe we should do like two more laps. And we're like all followed. We're like, maybe we should go to sleep. No, two more. We can do two more laps, I swear. <laughs> it's just somebody out there pushing Rob around on a Rubbermaid cart. I would just <laughs> I would just get on my longboard and just longboard oh, back and forth. There you go. <laughs> It's so flat. That sound, uh, Rob's out <laughs> <laughs> off into the distance, off into the sunset. Yeah, <laughs> I I am now envisioning somebody pushing Rob on a Rubbermaid cart into the sunset. <laughs> great, <laughs> great. With all the rattlesnakes in the world. Oh uh, yes, I'm so you'd about okay it. Yeah, yeah. Okay it's funny because after the fourth um, great basin rattlesnake that we found, they were like, mm, "We shouldn't even stop for these," and I was like, "Don't you dare." We need to stop for all of them. Everyone, everyone. <laughs> that really is like the downfall of being a New Englander going to any other part of the country where grotolids are very common. Yeah. Like, no, this is so amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I need to see every one of them. I know. And they, they didn't even look all that different. I was just like, I just want to see them all. I just want to look at them. And just, <laughs> wow, you are a tiny venomous snake. I'm, I'm here for this. I'm just saying. Which, which, which scene? 
Yeah. I think the one where he's going. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the one where he's uh, flying. Oh, the across. Bike yes, yes, across yes, yes. The moon. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I will sit in whoever's carriage. I will wrap a blanket around my head. I'll make myself Boy, a little burrito. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Like, look, a bird, a plane. No, it's Rob. Oh, it's Rob. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, if if everybody who is listening slash watching is not right now imagining Rob in some sort of carriage. Yes, on the front of a ba- bicycle, wrapped up in a little white blanket <laughs> with just my face sticking out. <laughs> it's so cute. And one finger. Yeah. One fi- <laughs> you see him? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm just saying I put up the money to make that happen Hey man <laughs> I, I know some guys I'm a cheap date That's all I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Oh Too yeah. good Oh man Alright So Lucas Yes We have a very important question for you Send the loans You already know Oh okay That's all right. That's got you excited in the hobby right now yeah. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, the closing question that we ask everyone is uh, whether it be something in your collection, something you've seen in someone else's collection, something that you've seen online, just browsing online right now. What is something in the realm of reptiles underneath the greater umbrella of reptiles that has got you excited for reptiles right now? Besides your baby green tree pythons. It can be your baby creature pilots if you want. I'm, I'm gonna go bigger, go home. Indian Garios. Mm, yeah. Indian Garios, yeah! dude. Fucking badass. Hell yeah, dude. I would love to go visit Rom Whitaker and see the Garial stuff that they're doing yes. over there, and then the King Cobra stuff. <gasps> uh that'd Field be so trip. cool. I I've not <laughs> seen a Garial in person, so I it feel like that's one of those things where I'll get emotional. I'll just be like. <gasps> <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's like, just leave Rob over there. Just let him. Yeah. Go to let him just stare. Yes. Honestly, I, I have been. The first time I saw them, it was so mm-hmm. cool, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard they're massive. They're just huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, dude. And I there was um one of the places that I follow had found some loose teeth in the bottom of the Garial exhibit, and I was like. Okay, how much do I have to pay you to get one of those Garial teeth? I will literally spend a hundred dollars on a Garial tooth, and they shed them all the time. Like it's just like a shark; they just regrow them back. So it's not like I don't want you to harvest them from them. But if there's a broken tooth in there, I will literally give you a hundred dollars for a Garial tooth. I want one. I want a necklace <laughs> with a Garial tooth on it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that would be pretty. That'd badass. be so cool. That'd be pretty badass. I've seen the alligator tooth necklace, and okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But a Garial tooth on a necklace. Dude, I love Only the them. real ones would know. Because everybody would be like, that's a cool alligator tooth. You'd be like, you son of a bitch. Peasants. <laughs> <laughs> you peasants. Have you seen the baby that, that St. Augustine had? Oh, my goodness. Kenan, Kenan did a video on it when it was like two years old. Mm. It's like, and the nose is like. Dude, it's like <laughs> how did it come out the egg? I love it. I love it. I know. How does that fit in the egg? It's probably curled. I know, just yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, and then no. it comes out. It's like on the uh, dwarf caiman when they hatch out, all the uh, ridges along their tail are folded down, oh. and then they they <laughs> pop up over the first like week or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Damn, that is pretty sweet, dude. All right, Lucas. So if people want to find out more about you and the things that you're doing, where are they gonna go? You can go check out my Instagram, Cobra Keeper Junior. I also have another one, LM Exotics, Lucas Maso Exotics. I don't really use that one. I do need to. But Cobra Keeper Jr. is my main one. Mm. And then I also have a website. You have a website? I made it last year, yeah. Damn, okay, okay. Um, He's more legit than me. LMExotics.com. Right now, it's just a little bit about me and my, like a little gallery. But soon, hopefully next year, mm. hog noses. Hell yeah. Damn. And you got to post progression pictures of your babies as they go through their ontogenetic color change. Yes. 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 Hell yeah. Absolutely. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate having you on here. Yeah, Thank, you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Boom. Hey. hey.